Okay, let's move to the uh, Mifepristone case because the Mifepristone case, um, on its face, looks like a uh, a win, and on some level, it is in terms of access, uh, at least in you know the short term, to Mifepristone. And something like sixty percent of abortions in this country are performed uh, uh, using Mifepristone. But um, there, there's going to be other implications from this ruling in terms of standing. What Walk us through uh, uh, this case. Yeah, so I'm on team, this was a good day, right? And the, like, I, I understand that there, there are dark forces gathering, but this is a good decision. Um, the standing argument, so standing is the concept of whether or not you have a right to sue somebody in the first place, right? And so how do you get to a point where you have people who did not take mifepristone, did not take the abortion pill, and doctors who did not prescribe the abortion pill. How do you get to a point where these people are suing the abortion pill? They ain't take it, nobody forced them to take it. Why are you even here, right? And the argument, the actual argument from religious conservatives for why they could sue over the abortion pill was because women who take the abortion pill and had a bad experience with it, allegedly, are too ashamed of their choices because they're little girls. They were too ashamed to sue, sue for themselves. And so the religious people had to sue for them because the little ladies were too ashamed. And then when he got to the appellate court, to the Fifth Circuit, um, uh, Fifth Circuit Judge James Ho said, there's another reason why they have standing. And that's because of the aesthetic injury that people like James Ho suffer when he can't see pregnant women in their bellies. He likes to look at pregnant women, you know, in the wild in their you know, natural habitat, as if they're in a zoo or a nature preserve. And so by taking away their pregnant bellies, it makes James Ho very sad. And that's why he had standing to sue. These two standing arguments were ridiculous. They were not, unlegal doesn't even kind of get in to the scope of how dumb they were. And those are the two arguments that the Supreme Court unanimously rejected in this Mifepristone case. Now, does that mean nobody has standing? That's not true. And Republicans will figure out some way, probably through state action, like the state of Texas will sue. The Republicans will figure out some way. The Supreme Court never got to the merits of whether or not Mifepristone should be allowed or not, even though this is a drug that's been on the market for over 20 years, over 30 years in Europe. No complications, one of the safest way, the safest way um, to get an abortion. No matter to them, they will find some other way to sue. And this case will come back to us again in the future. But I still think it's good that the Supreme Court rejected these ridiculous standing arguments because they're Republicans. They didn't have to reject them. Right. And the uh, longer and the longer that the drug is on the market here, the harder it is to sort of say, like, we still don't know what the implications are of this. And but what of the argument that in um, some of the court's reasoning, they go further than saying, you, you know, you, you, the idea that you can't see more pregnant women is, uh, you know, a little problematic, you know, a little problematic in terms of like you actually suffering some type of damage in which we're in a position to fix, right? That's the that's the principle about torts, uh, about you know lawsuits that uh, must exist, but that they also inhibited the standing of people who might say, um, for a, an environmental protection, I don't own um, a river, but I do suffer a consequence. If a river is polluted or broadly speaking, you know, uh, th things are allowed to be polluted because it's part of the commons, for instance, or something like that. Like wh what of that? Like wh where do you see them attempting to bar citizens from the courthouse in the future? Yes, that was part of the long game. You're absolutely right, Sam. That was part of the long game of this decision. It's one of the reasons why conservatives rejected this standing argument because they don't like standing arguments generally. Like they don't like people to have standing. And you brought up the environmental case, Neil Gorsuch, whose mother 
was the head of the EPA under Ronald Reagan and kind of the anti-EPA, like she hated the EPA. She, her, Neil Gorsuch's mom basically tried to destroy the in, EPA from the inside out. Neil Gorsuch hates environmental lawsuits, doesn't think they should be allowed. And so exactly the situation, again, I analogize what Ho is doing, this calling women like you know uh, manatees out in the wild. But if you actually wanted to see a manatee and you couldn't because some you know Exxon was shoving oil up its butt, you now kind of can't sue Exxon for that, for taking away your actual manatees, right? Um, uh, uh, Clarence Thomas's concurrence in this case um, was really attacked because, you know, Clarence Thomas lives to, like, hate black people. Like, that's why he thinks he was put on this earth. Um, Clarence Thomas's concurrence was really attacking the NAACP, right? So if I get, you know, brutalized by a police officer, maybe I sue the cop, but maybe I get a whole bunch of people who were also brutalized by the police officers, and I say, hey, NAACP, would you sue the cops, right? Because I don't have money to to do that lawsuit on myself. And so the NAACP would sue on my behalf, you know, against police brutality. Um, Clarence Thomas specific, not specifically, but like very obviously attacked that kind of standing, right? To try to prevent organizations like the NAACP and NARAL and Planned Parenthood from suing um, on behalf of their uh, clients. So it, there are all these kind of long time bombs, poison pills that the conservatives put into this uh, decision, which will, will come to pass, will come due, again, if we allow conservatives to continue to control the Supreme Court for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Those will all happen, but I guess I'm not as worried about that in the context of this decision as others, simply because they can do whatever they want anyways for, for 30 years. We're fucked anyway. Like, there, right. there's, yeah, yeah. You, you don't, you can't come back from that anyway. They did it in this case. They would do it in some other case when they had the opportunity. The problem is conservative control, at least for the next few months, even uh, um, the, most safe and most access way um, to get an abortion is still available. The decision, even if it has all these dark motives, long game things, will save lives. Right, right, right. Very good point. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.